fitness friends and welcome to Vital Moves. I'd like to begin by acknowledging um, Living Tomogamy and thanking them for this support and for Chandel for all of her programming skills and making this possible for many of us to present to you. Um, so just making sure before we begin that uh, you've got a space around you, three to four feet, no slip, no trip uh, on the surface. You've got some water close by and just a chair is all you really need. Okay, so just making sure that is uh, set up for you. So my name is Mary and I've been teaching movement related skills for a couple of decades and I'm happy to be here outdoors. Um, so before we actually start, just be aware of your space uh, around you. I'll be asking you to extend your peripheral awareness. So even though you're focused on me, once in a while we'll just step back and broaden our focus so that you're more aware of all of your surroundings. And I certainly am here in this lovely spot. The ground is a little uneven here. Uh, for you, if you're indoors, that probably won't be the case. So sometimes as I move, you might uh, notice that it's a little bit off balance, but that's just me using my reflex skills to come to center. Okay. So let's begin with your feet comfortably about hip distance apart and particularly your toes spread and relaxed. So the name of this uh, exercise um, program for you today that I've created is called Light Heart and Limber Body. And I just want to say for the heart part, it is a, uh, a heavy period with the news that we've heard uh, about the residential school um, children's grave that they have found. So I just want to dedicate this class and the uh, color of orange over the heart for uh, those children in the indigenous communities mourning that and the beautiful poppies behind us in the color orange. Okay. So starting with the legs always making sure that the knees and the hips are easy, that there's not a bracing and holding and pushing back with the legs. The legs, like the root systems of plants, they're continually moving and searching for nourishment. And so our, our feet in particular and our legs will also have that role. Okay. And we'll go through a whole body scan and an energizing of the different body parts. Uh, in a minute, um, but just feeling that uh, connection to the floor. So what we'll do uh, as we move up a little bit more, as the energy moves up from the earth through the legs, is when it gets to the belly with our hands, hands are very knowing, huge reservoirs of the brain are devoted to hand activity because of their dexterity, their capability. So we will use the hands to facilitate more awareness and knowing through our body. So with our hands, big and generous, we're going to place them at the bottom part of the belly and we're going to slide our hands up our belly. Just to remind here of a little bit of tone, uh, a little bit of activation here. And then when they get to the lower ribs and waist, I'm gonna turn around so you can see, you're going to then slide the hands down the back. And why we do this in these directions is the belly by nature tends to be, even though digestive wise, uh, we can be a little anxious that, that area, but muscularly this area tends just to, uh, to be a little more docile and quiet, whereas the back tends to be a little hyper vigilant. So we smooth down the back and that should feel really nice, nicely. So up through the front, just to remind those muscles to stay toned and connected and then down the back. So here's the breathing, breathing in, breathing right into your belly. Belly will fill and expand as you breathe in and as you breathe out, sliding your hands down your low back and down through the legs. Okay, just to remind the trunk of that quality of lift through the front 
and are releasing and dropping down the back. So in between each exercise, like a little commercial break, we'll take a deep breath in. So always in through the nose. The nose has better filters, important during these times. Deep breath in through the nose and then breathing out through the mouth. You can also breathe out through the nose, but in particular, when you breathe in, it's in through the nose. So we're going to move up the body and give a different quality and sensation of movement um, to different part, uh, to each of the different parts of the body. But remember, we, we describe body parts, but really there's just one body. It's one organism. Any movement uh, experienced in one area, the rest of the body will respond and listen. So it's always a whole body response. Okay. So to enliven the body from the ground up, we're gonna start with the feet and we're gonna do a little vibration movement. This is like a wake up call for the earth saying, oh, I'm gonna start to move on you. I'd like you to sp uh, send your nourishing uh, energy up through my body. Vibration is not something we think about very much in fitness. It's kind of a, a, funny, a funny move, but very invigorating for the joints, for the organs. It's like a pulse through the body that you're creating with a, a little vibration through the ankles, knees, and hips, and everything is just hanging out. Okay, and the arms can just vibrate along with this. You may have noticed kids love to do this. When they're not really thinking about something, their mind is somewhere and they'll do this little vibration and shaking. And when you bring that to a close, notice a kind of tingling that uh, continues through the body. Okay, so that's for the feet, pulsing, really nice. So for the legs, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, slide the hands just like we did up the belly and down the back, but we're going to do that with a rubbing motion. Whenever you lower yourself, and I'll talk about this uh, throughout the session, and we do this when we go to sit down, uh, getting up and out of bed, the motion always starts here. This is your major bending joint is the hip. The knees will respond automatically, but this is where you wanna think of bending and maintaining a, just an easy alignment through your whole spine. The butt will go back and you're just going to rub up the legs, keeping the knees and hips bent, kind of like energizing the legs, rubbing up the legs. We'll just do this twice, one on each side, rubbing up the legs, and noticing as you lower yourself that the knees are directly over the middle of the feet, that they're not falling in or rolling out. Really important, especially when we get to the squats part. Okay, so rubbing and energizing up the legs. For the hips, quite different. It'll be circular and fluid. So arms can be here like surfing and you're just gonna make a circular motion, one side to the back, to the other side, and to the front. So here you're highlighting the circular quality of this joint, it's a ball and socket joint. And here we're moving sideways, front and back with the hips, with the pelvis over the leg uh, joint, and then the other way. So the abdominals are gently involved here. It's not a huge core exercise, but they're certainly involved in this. The massage is getting a low back, all uh, down the bones of the legs. There's a lot involved with this circular motion. Okay. Moving up through the trunk now, it's a tapping, like a, a little rainfall. So for the trunk, you're gonna do a pitter patter of tapping up through the sternum and chest, along the shoulders, in particular a patting and a tapping, encouraging the shoulders to stay down. Tap, 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 tap. And when you go around the back, just as we did before, you can turn the palms so it's not a strain for the shoulder and tapping along the low back and the kidney area. Okay. And bring that to a close. 
moving up to the arms, it's a waving motion. So when I say arms, the shoulders will be involved in this as well. So we were surfing a, a little bit earlier and now this is the waves. Okay. So as you do this, you're particularly with muscles here, your deltoid muscles are working, your pec muscles are working, all the shoulder blade muscles that wrap around your scapula, your shoulder blades are working. Good. And bring that to a close. And then finally, the top part of the body. Pervasively now, uh, you will see people, especially the younger generation, but not exclusively, in this posture. Right? Everywhere you look. Head is hanging, puts a tremendous strain on the neck, on the shoulders, all of the organs in the trunk. So what we're going to do with our hands is you're going to put your thumbs and your cheekbones and your fingers along the back of the head and you're using your fingers you're just going to with a little bit of pressure you're going to slide your hands up the back of the neck with a little traction pull and this is where your hair is going to get messy you give your hair a little pull and mine will probably stay there okay let's do that again so hands at the cheek thumbs at the cheekbones fingers at the back of the neck and then with a little bit of pressure, you're pulling gently up, but back. So you're bringing the head over the shoulders. And sometimes days can go by without the head assuming its more rightful position over the body, just because of the nature of tasks that we're involved with. Okay, so that's a little enlivening motion. So your whole body wakes up because no matter what area we're focused on for stretching or for muscular work, the whole body is always involved. Okay, so for a little bit of cardio, because we will stretch, we will do a little bit of resistance, coordination for sure, body awareness, but a little bit of cardio, we're gonna do the most basic human task, which is walking on the spot. So we're just gonna do a little march really easy. So when you march, just be aware that the toes come down first, just half a second before the heels. So that gives a little more cushioning and sequencing to the feet so you're not pounding them flat on the ground. And notice my arms are swinging in natural opposition, really therapeutic, upper lower body involved here. So what we're gonna do in a minute, we're gonna do a little freeze frame and it looks like this. Now, the foot doesn't have to barely be off the ground. If you're good on your balance, you can lift a little higher. So we're going to freeze frame for a few seconds, and then we're going to march again. And the next time, it'll be the opposite pair. So we're starting to sneak in some balance with this little bit of cardio. And go ahead with the other pair. Works on memory as well. And freeze frame for a few seconds and breathe. And march again. Now, if you find this is challenging, that's why we have the chair handy. You can, you can do this march. You won't have the opposite arm uh, to coordinate necessarily with that. Now I noticed that time, even I held my breath when I did the freeze frame. You don't wanna do that. That's the trickiest part to this. And let's freeze frame, right? Okay, now let that go. We're gonna add one more component. So depending on your fitness level, you may have noticed uh, it's, uh, uh, it's getting the heart working a little bit more. Um, but what we're gonna do to challenge the balance now is we're gonna give that leg that's up, that foot that's up, a little shake, okay? So exactly the same, just a little longer with a little vibration. I'm gonna bring this closer just to show you that you can certainly do this with holding on to the chair. So here you are marching, easy breath. The wind feels lovely here and the sun is coming up. And then go ahead and freeze frame. So you can test your balance like this and give a shake. So you're on that leg for a little bit longer. Next time it'll be the other leg. So marching softly on the spot. You shouldn't be making any noise here because you're landing toes and then heel first and freeze frame and a little shake. 
Okay, now if you feel confident with that, the third level is opposite hand and foot shake. Okay, so you're working with coordination. Really important for that left right brain work. So we're going to do our marching on the spot. Easy breath. And then go ahead and freeze frame and shake. Breathing easy. March again. So just a second or two with that oppositional balance and then shake and then it'll be your other pair. Freeze frame and shake. Good. And one more time with this. Deep breath in and out. Just let the exhale spill out and freeze frame first pair and shake and then last time marching notice the whole body movement here the shoulders are marching the ribs are marching and freeze frame and shake great okay good so a little bit for the arms. If you have any rotation problems with the shoulders, if you can't lift above shoulder level, you can keep the arms uh, just to here. I'm going to lift a little bit higher, so I'm going to show you a modified version first. Let's say it's getting really hot and it's supposed to get really warm today. If you were to take off a sweater, it would look like this. Okay. So this is the modified version, just to there, okay, if you have any shoulder limitation, but otherwise a full lift will be like this. It's a little bit dramatic. So after we remove the sweater overhead, like so, we call this fountain arms because it's like a fountain spraying out from the top of the head. So the modified version, inhale and exhale and the full version, taking off the sweater, and here is your fountain to wash, to shower in, okay? And circle the shoulders around and back, and around and back. Okay, good. All right, so what we're gonna do now is a movement, and you can use your chair to start with, and if you want to keep using a chair and then just omit the arm part, that's absolutely fine. But to work on your balance, your upper and lower body, you want to eventually be able to add the arm. So for the legs, I call this a skating move. It's not something we want to think about this time of year, but it's a wonderful move for the behind muscles, which are really important for your balance and to support the trunk, the spine. So it's called um, a skating move. So I'll show you what it looks like. And the foot is barely off the ground, like so. Notice that my foot, my ankle has to bend a little bit because otherwise my toes will stub on the floor. So as you do this, you can do the, you can at the same time test the water, so to speak. And if you reach around behind and if you press a little bit in those butt muscles, you should feel that they're firm, they're working because those are the main muscles that lift the leg behind. The hamstrings as well, but the butt muscles. The hamstrings tend to get quite tight by that nature. The butt tends to be a little lazier. So this is the skating move, okay? And I'm going to show you now the upper body move that's going to coordinate with this. So this is called a row, a low row. It's a typical movement done in the gym, mostly for the muscles, for the muscles between the shoulder blades. Because with poor posture, those will be very lax, so we want to stimulate and activate them. Okay, so the movement is very simple. It's like you're pulling on some bungee cords or a TheraBand and you're going to pull in toward your hips like this. Reach for the band and pull it in. Reach for the band and pull it in. So your biceps will be involved, the deltoids, but particularly the muscles between your shoulder blades. Let's put that together for 10 repetitions. So skating and rows and it looks like this. 
pull, pull, pull. If you want to breathe with this, this is our fifth one. Exhale, pull back. Inhale forward, exhale, pull back. And because it's slow, it may be challenging your balance as well. I think we've got two more. Right, just being careful not to lift too high with this. If you lift very high, you can pinch the back, which you don't want to do. And this is why right at the beginning, we did that pulling up the front and brushing down the back to remind you of that placement here so that the belly doesn't hang forward and the pelvis is tipped. So we have a nice balance here in the pelvic region, okay? So that was skating with low rows, okay? All right, we'll take a deep breath in and out to mark the next phase. All right. So what we're gonna do is a um, little exercise. It's a creative exercise about shapes and it comes from the movement world and the body will make four distinct shapes and it will involve every joint and every muscle of your body. So we'll do it in a really small way to start with. So the first one is wide and flat like a wall. So the feet are wide, the arms are wide. The second one is round, it's a ball. So you're gonna bend at the hips and knees a little bit and hug an imaginary ball and notice the spine is also rounded. My tailbone is tucked under, so this is your ball. The next one, very different, is a pin. Again, if you have shoulder limitations, this is fine. Otherwise, you can go higher with the arms. Now, this is where your balance will really come into play. Put one foot in front of the other. That'll challenge your balance already. But if it doesn't feel like it's challenging your balance, you can put the feet more tandem, okay? But if you're wobbling too much, widen your feet. Okay, so that's pin. And the last one is spiral. So it's like a gnarly, twisty rotation movement. Those are the four shapes, okay? So let's do that again. Wall, ball. In. one foot in front of the other doesn't matter which leg and then spiral a twist and a turn we're going to do this one more time with your breathing wall breathe in ball breathe out pin breathe in and spiral breathe out Okay, so every part of the body in a fluid motion. Take a deep breath in. Recheck your body, legs underneath your hip joints, shoulders wide, a gentle pulling up through the front, a brushing down the back, this invisible thread through the crown of the head. Now you'll notice I close my eyes a lot. Partly it's because of the sun, but also when I'm really focusing and concentrating when I'm going inward more, I tend to close my eyes. I suggest you don't, you need to see me, but also for balance, it, it becomes much harder, of course, when you close your eyes. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do is have a little drink if your water is close by. I'm gonna shift over toward the chair. We're gonna do a bit of specific stretching for the legs. And then we'll have a seat on the chair and do a couple of fun things from sitting. So I'm gonna have a drink as well. Okay, so if you have your chair handy, it should be a nice sturdy chair. And we're gonna do one of the most important stretches if you've been doing any standing work, especially walking or standing in a static position, washing your dishes or painting or anything like that that involves a static position, you'll need to stretch the muscles at the back of the legs. The front as well, but that's more for vigorous activity. For just standing and walking, it will likely be the back of the legs. So this is a calf stretch. 
your hands will be lightly on the chair. So remember, don't over grip, just very lightly for support. One foot will be in front of the other. Now important for this that both the toes are facing forward. In another exercise, we'll have the back leg facing to the side, but for this one, forward. The front knee is slightly bent. You should still be able to see your toes. The back leg is straight at the knee joint. The toes are relaxed, both heels are down, and this is stretching your calf. Shoulders are wide, gently pulled up through the front, relaxed through the back. Now, if you feel, oh, I'm not feeling very much there, you may need to go back a little bit more, like so, to feel the stretch. Now, for some of you, this may be even too intense, in which case you bring the leg further forward. So you need to be able to monitor the sensation that you could feel a pull in your calf muscle, and you hold that for 15, 20, 30 seconds, three or four slow breaths. Okay, come out of that slowly, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So don't let a day go by without doing this calf stretch. If your calf is tight, it can lead to some problems under your feet. You may have heard of plantar fasciitis. It can also pull on its first cousin muscle, the hamstring and so forth, up the whole back of the body. Toes are relaxed, front knee is slightly bent, the back knee is straight. You hold and breathe three or four slow deep breaths, 15, 20, 30 seconds maximum holding that stretch. Okay. So when you do this on your own, you want to make sure you do that twice. We won't do that today, but twice is good. The first time is just like a rehearsal, and the second time is the real thing. Okay, so now we get to sit down. So we're going to do a, another stretch from sitting, and this time it's for its cousin, the hamstring muscle. So the hamstring just goes from the base of the pelvis to behind the knee. So for this stretch, and I'm a little wobbly, I'm going to readjust a bit, uh, sit more forward on your chair. Don't sit back because the tendency when we sit back, and we all do this, is to slump. When you slump, the chest is collapsed, the head pokes forward, Okay, pressure on all the organs. So you want to be sitting up on your sitting bones feet flat, feet about hip distance apart, shoulders wide, and your invisible thread through the crown. So for your hamstring, one heel will come forward. Now I need to go forward a little more. My legs are not very long so that I can straighten my knee. The ankle is bent so the toes are up toward the ceiling and there's no rounding of the spine. We're going to get to that in a minute. The spine will stay what's called neutral. You'll still have a little curve in your low back. You'll still have a curve in the neck. The bend happens here. So our repeating theme of the bend in the hip joint. And as soon as you hinge forward, you'll feel a stretch at the back of the leg. It doesn't take very long for most of us. If you feel you're not getting enough of a stretch, just gently hinge a little deeper in the hip joint, but careful not to round the back. Hold that and breathe. Feel the stretch at the underside of your leg. And then return. Okay, same thing on the other side. We are rarely the same on both sides. So feel the lift first. Feel your width. And then from there you hinge at the hip. And you'll feel the stretch at the underside of the leg. Easier to do with a firm chair like this. On a couch, you will sink in and the pelvis will tip. You want the pelvis to be quite upright to get the full benefit of the stretch. Okay, so again, when you do this on your own, you wanna do that twice. Okay, so from here, a little coordination exercise. So feet together, knees together, and you're going to hide behind your hands like hiding behind a shutter. This is called sitting open ups. So on the inhale, and it's a little bit of a burst of a movement, you're gonna open the arms and legs just to about the corners of your chair. You're gonna open and then close. And if you have a little one, you play peekaboo with them, they will love this. Open 
and close. Here's your breathing. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. So a little bit of core work because your feet come off the floor, both of them, for about a second. So the trunk has to assume more work. Inhale, exhale, and one more. Inhale, and exhale. Okay, shake that out. So that's pretty easy with coordination, generally. We're gonna make it a little more challenging. We're gonna open only the opposites, the opposites. So the pair that are left will be just in a freeze frame on the spot. So I'm gonna do the slow motion first so you can see. Open and close. So really challenging the brain, a brain gym kind of exercise. Let's try that together. Inhale, the arm stays just where it is, the one that isn't uh, involved with the opening. Exhale, one more set. Inhale, exhale, and inhale, and exhale. Bring the arms down. We were taking the sweater off before. We're gonna do the opposite movement. This is called waterfall arms. So inhale, now, if you can only lift to shoulder level, this is fine. Otherwise, we bring the arms a little higher. Inhale and exhale. Washing over you a nice, uh, comfortable hug, a snug hug here. And again, inhale and exhale. Okay, and we're gonna shake that out. All right. Going to stand up again. The chair will be close to you in case you need it for some of the further exercises, but I'm going to place it aside. So we're going to do now three specific movements for the spine. So the spine is able to move in three uh, spatial um, uh, directions, side to side, front and back, and then a rotation. And we've done variations of that already with some of the movements, but we're gonna really focus on the spine this time. So let's start front and back. We already did the a ball one where we folded or rounded the spine. We're gonna call this one hugging a tree, but essentially the shape is the same. So it's gonna be whatever tree you love, but a big one, and you're gonna hug the trunk of the tree like so. Notice my tailbone is slightly tucked under, so the back is rounded a little bit, and my whole body is rounded. Okay. Now we're going to put our back to a tree and hug a tree with our back to the tree. So the arms just slightly behind, the chest will open. Hug a tree behind, hug a tree in front, so slightly rounding the back and then hug a tree behind. So this works the spine in what's called flexion and extension. And I would say overall, we probably need the extension part a little bit more because most job tasks are forward oriented. Okay, now for sideways, we're gonna do a side bend, a little, um, a little variation here, a little choreography. So we're gonna start with your right hand right hand to the right shoulder right hand to the top of the head now you can stop here and do your side bend but if you don't have any shoulder restriction you can lift up higher and then from here like the wind is blowing you you're just a young tree and the wind is bending your trunk and as you do this a little brushing up the front as we've done a few times before Bring your hand back up toward the sky, top of the head, shoulder, and down. Okay, so I'm gonna move back a little bit to even up my stand. Other side, hand to your shoulder, hand to the top of the head. You can stop here or reach a little bit higher. And then from here, starting with the crown of the head, the arm just goes along with this to frame your face. 
and a sliding of your hand reminding those abdominal muscles gently drawn in to support the back back up toward the ceiling top of the head shoulder down and we're gonna roll the shoulders back with a deep breath in and out okay so the last move oh I can't resist everyone I can't believe this little leaf here this is lungwort. I'm going to put it on my heart. Isn't that lovely? It's a beautiful plant. It's got a lot of healing properties for the lungs. So anyway, those are the surprises you'll find in nature. I'll put it here with my poppy petal. Okay, so the last motion of the spine is rotation. So with rotation, we're going to do a movement called sweeping the table clean. So it's a very eloquent dance-like movement for a mundane chore. So feet are wide. The arms will sweep across the table and then they're going to wrap around your body like so. I'd like you to take a look. The back arm, don't force too much, especially if you have restriction, is uh, close to the tailbone here. The front arm is on your front of your hip. Sweep and wrap. So the hands are right on your body. Breathe in, breathe out. So rotation. Notice my leg is free, so I'm not torquing and, and, and uh, straining at the knee. And wrap. Two more. Inhale and exhale. And one more. Inhale and exhale. Okay, shake that. So we are going to get to the exercise that's probably the most common gym exercise you'll see. Very important for the health of the legs and the hips, especially for women as we age. You want to um, avoid falls at any cost and this will keep your legs strong and they're squats. So we're just going to do a mini squats and I'm going to go through the body mechanics of a squat. So a squatting basically means you're lowering your center of gravity, which is here, for any number of reasons. The bend always starts here at the hip joint. When you do your squats, you generally want to have your feet a little wider than hip distance or shoulder distance or even a little bit wider. When the legs are wide, the feet will be turned out to some degree. That's natural. You don't have to have your feet facing forward. That wouldn't be natural. So the feet just a little bit turned out the bend happens from the hip joint, so the butt will go back naturally because the squat basically prepares you for sitting or squatting, okay? So the hands will be on your thighs. The back will stay nice and neutral, so we're not rounding, we're not flexing the back. You're going to slide your hands down your thighs. Notice the butt is going back, okay? And then just to the knees, and then to go up, you walk your hands with a little bit of pressure. So you're doing two things. You're, you're reminding those quad muscles that they're working. Yeah. And you're just giving yourself a little extra support. So bending at the hip joints, the knees naturally bend, not too deeply. You slide your hands down your legs. And then from here, with a little bit of pressure, you walk your hands up your legs as you straighten your hips and knees and spine. Okay, we're gonna do that one more time. Hands at the front of the thighs, hips go back. Check your knees to make sure they're not buckling in. They're staying over the feet. You're gonna slide down your thighs and then walking your hands up your legs. That prepares you for sitting. So I'm just gonna show you with a chair if you do that when you go to sit down, if you can remember, anytime you go to sit down, if you take your time, you're going to really work those thigh muscles. Really, really important. And when you, same thing, so going up, you can put your hands here. 
very dramatic getting up and down but if you take the time that's going to really build your leg strength really important okay i think we've got one or two more let me just uh, check my list yeah okay so we're going to end with a fluid movement it's called figure eights figure eights can be done with any part of the body we're going to start with the arms in a very small way. As it gets bigger, the shoulders will be more involved, the ribs and the hips, and then we'll, um, we'll begin to diminish the size of the movement. Um, so let's begin with our figure eights. So feet wider for this, definitely wider than shoulder width apart. A little mini, mini, mini squat. So the hips are slightly bent, the knees are bent so that as the hips move the legs are responsive to the motion of the hips the palms are facing each other to start with about a foot apart and we're going to tip our arms to the right flip the palms and go to the left now you'll notice here as you do this the palms are either facing up or down and they do this wonderful flip near the end of the sideways pull. Okay, your weight is shifting. If the foot slightly comes off the floor on one side, that's fine. It becomes a little bit like a, a side lunge. Good. You'll notice here the shoulders, the ribs, the hips, the legs, again, a whole body movement. Easy breath, shoulders just gliding over your ribs, hanging from your ears, down and away from your ears. Make this a little smaller and a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. And then make it so small it becomes like this invisible energy ball. And at the start I had I had uh, dedicated this class uh, to the Indigenous children. So what we'll do with this ball of goodwill energy is we're going to send it out towards healing. Okay. So to end the class, what I'd like to do, because it's very dancey, is I'd like to do a little curtsy for each other. And, um, and then a little uh, uh, a bow, okay? So for a curtsy, we're gonna start with the right leg. So tap your right leg. Remember the hands are very all knowing. Sometimes the legs get confused right and left. So if you tap your right leg, I'm tapping my left, but for you, it'll be the right. You're gonna step out to the side, take a hold of the chair if you need to, bring your other leg behind. The toe can stay on the floor and you just do a mini squat, like so. Other side, step out to the side. The arm does the same thing as the leg. You bring the leg behind, use the table or chair if you need to. The foot comes behind and you do a little. So that's definitely a balance exercise. Step out to the side, other leg behind, a little bend. And step out to the side, behind and bend. So for the, the bowing, same idea, but no stepping behind, just step together and a bow. Out to the side, coordinating right and left sides, same side. Out to the side and bow. And out to the side. Thank you, everyone. Namaste, Megwich, Fala in my language. Merci beaucoup. Thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed that.